Hey guys, what's going on? It's Alexander Williamson here with the secret history of living in your aquarium, except we're not in my aquariums today. We are here in Seattle at a lake called Green Lake, and today we're going to be talking about dip nets, or these things, which are simply nets on a pole that you can dip into the water. And we're going to be talking a little bit about how you use them if you're brand new to them. There's all sorts of nuances and techniques that you can master with years of practice. So I would say I'm not by any means an expert, but I've gotten quite a few little techniques down. Uh, and I've also got a lot of friends that have been doing this for years. So I usually go out with a little micro rod or fly rod with barbless hooks. And then I go out with this. And at Jonah's Aquarium, he also sells all sorts of cool native fish and stuff. So I wanted to give him a plug. He sent me these when I was in Florida, and he sent them out to John uh, Buttkiss when we were in uh, Chicago. And John collects with them. I know Grant collects with them. Dr. Anthony Maserol has them down at his uh, Peruvian Amazon Center. So they are the gold standard for nets. If you're interested, there's a link down below so that's the whole ad part now let's get down to technique and how is the best way to use these if you're new at netting and you want to just go out and try it all right so if you're working with a ledge this is great because there's actually if you look at this carefully there's a ledge and the water just because of wave action even on a tiny little lake like this one in seattle you get wave action from the wind so you can get underneath this shelf and literally work your way back especially if you have a little inlet not much bigger than the net you can work at an angle and literally pry whatever's under there and i'm doing this way too slow but then you want to make sure that this isn't some deep burrow like a catfish hole or something because then you're going to come all the way to here and you're going to do that all quickly and then you're going to look and see what you got out from under there if you got a sculpin or something like that that's this is where they would hide same with catfish uh, same with uh, you know snapping turtles so beware but you can also do the same thing over here now I'm gonna try this in real time with one hand which you would never really do uh, out in the wild but just to see if there's anything here but that little inlet is small enough that the net blocked the exit of any fish that would have been in there. Bam, I could have come at it and I'm concealed behind the edge here. So that's why man-made embankments, bridges, things like that are great. And sometimes you think it's bad because you lost a fish under a rock or something like this, but really they may be right up against it too. So even if you saw it go under there, it's worth kind of poking and prodding and seeing if perhaps you caught something under there. Uh, because a lot of times they will come out or if you rattle and make enough noise, including sometimes you can just, if there's a rock on the bottom or a rock on the side, either hit it with your net or tap it with your net and this ra rattly noise, it just startles them. And so they will try taking off in a new direction. And that's when you have another opportunity to try to get under them and startle them back into the actual grip of the net. And then all you have to do is lift up, and if you're down at the water and you're here, the net, the fish could be all the way in the top of the net here, or it could be deep. It's probably gonna be deeper, but remember, all it takes when you've got your hand back on that back handle is a twist, and that quickly, you're back up to the top. And this is me doing it one-handed. You're back up to the top, and you got all this debris. A lot of times you can use the debris to kind of corral them in. And a lot of times they'll feel safe. They'll feel like, oh, I've got some plant debris or I've got some sticks. I'm, I'm hidden. And they'll, they'll just kind of chill out and sit there. And that's also a good time to try out right past the point of those places. These are always places with high biodiversity. So you can try it out and you may be lifting a heavy bunch of sticks and weeds and all sorts of stuff out but that's where you're going to find the fish and yes you're going to have to dig through and yes there might be some icky bugs or weird things in there you know know the hazards of where you are and uh, just be smart about it but that that is basically all there is to uh getting into it in the beginning today i'm going to be talking about dip nets 
But anyways, so sorry guys, if you don't watch Star Wars, I apologize for that. I apologize if you do watch Star Wars. Anyways, so today I want to show you the motions of successfully catching fish with a dip net. It's very similar to fencing actually, and a lot of it has to do with twisting back here with your hand, having another hand on the foregrip, and then with these dip nets, the perfect dip net by Jono's Aquarium, I love these ones. You can get dip nets wherever, but these ones are my favorite because, check this out, you can pull them apart in sections and then break them down all the way. I mean, what is that? And then this head comes off. You can get fine net for meshes that will catch mosquitoes, larger ones if you're out fly fishing or trying to catch actual large fish. And so say it's all taken apart, all these pieces are under two feet. Well, then you can put them back together. You can put them into your checked luggage, no problem. They literally snap together like that. And there's a little bit of noise, but you can literally attach as many of these together as you would want. Just remember, it's gonna get heavy and uh, you are the fulcrum, so it's gonna take more energy and force. All right, so the first, the first uh, motion that I wanna show you guys is what you would do if you're looking at a group of minnows or a small fish that are gonna take off when you come at them. And so, say that they're right in this area here. So what you're gonna do is they can see you here. So you're staying very still and motionless. You've got a hand over here and a hand here at first and you hold it like a pool cue and then what you're able to do is you can crouch down and when they're calm and when they're kind of relaxed you're going to shoot this piece out like this way past where the fish are and they're going to take off in a direction either this one or this one now it's usually the path of least resistance so wherever there's plants or if there's an embankment or rocks go the way where it's clear or where they can see that there's a place they can hide. But obviously they can't get through a rock, so they're not gonna go in the direction if there's a boulder or the shore right here. Most fish don't shore themselves, they'll go out. So we know that they're gonna go out and this way or out and this way. And we're just gonna take a guess. And we're so we're just gonna go like this, like your back. You get down, you wait for them to be relaxed. You can inch this out sometimes, depending on how skittish the fish are. And then you lunge it and you pull it back like that, as fast as you can, and you grip this to pull back. And that is your basic J stroke. Now the other stroke for more ambush predator fish, like catfish or perch or something bigger, even like a turtle that's gonna be sitting there and it's waiting to catch something, you can come down on them like a slap. So all you're doing again is you're holding the net back here and here. And this takes a lot more muscle in your back and shoulders. And it can be hard on your back and shoulders. So make sure you stretch and you take it easy. Don't overdo. You can really hurt yourself with these nets. And I know that sounds silly, but you really can. Like I've seen a lot of people go out for the day and be very sore afterwards. So go out. Like, if you're going to get something that's out in the water here, all you do is you go out, down, and in front of it. So that's out, down, in front, and you slap it down, and you let this rim break the water tension, this far rim. Whereas the other way, we were going out, slapping it down, it was all coming down at once, and then we were pulling it back. Well, the fish are going to panic, and when the fish panic, they're gonna go to the back of the net. That will take about one second to half a second, depending on the fish and its size. And that's why the little twist by that holding back here is gonna come in handy so often. So if I just go out and say, oh, I'm trying to catch it, you might catch the fish. If you are holding the back here and you wait to twist at the last moment, one, you can control your net profile and make sure that it's not showing as much. You can even sneak up underwater, so you could say like you're trying to come up on these roots, and then what you would do is you would go out past where they're gonna run, they're gonna run back to you, but they're gonna see you, be scared, and go back to the net, and that's when you bounce like this. And that just dislodges any fish in the substrate, and they'll all be trapped deeper in the sock there, because just like I said, if you're out in the open, if you got your net all the way out here, and it's underwater, if it's any deeper than the net is tall, 
you're not going to be able to pull it back in time. You're just not strong enough. The physics of the water is not going to work that way. But if your net's half underwater, there's a good chance you actually will be able to pull it in. So remember that and remember that we want to turn the net. You can turn it this way or you can also, you know, you could go the other way. Or when you're coming back like this, you can pull up or down and you can go left or right with the tilt. And just remember, you're trying to scare the fish with you, your shadow, a friend, or whatever's out in the distance. Maybe they don't want to go in deep water, the little fish. So they're gonna to try to school and work their way to somewhere safe. You've already assessed their routes. Your shadow's not over them. Your reflection is not over them. And they can see you still line of sight. So remember that. But if your shadow's not over them, your net shadow's not over them, and your reflection isn't over them, it, you're gonna have a way better chance than if they can actually feel you over them if you block the light over them, that's all bad stuff for trying to catch fish. But coming up and working underneath little areas like this is where you're gonna have your best luck. And like if the water were, were deeper right here, you lodge under the bank and then you pull it back towards you and do a continuous pull until you're all the way back at yourself and use either the shallows, if you're doing the long pole, you use the shallows as your stop. Then all you have to do is tilt the net up and you've cut off their access to escape. But also you can sometimes twist and turn as you're coming back. So watch me do a quick jab one like this and rock it like that back and forth. And what that does is they see the back of the net, they panic, they turn around, and then you are turning while they're turning and so they're gonna run smack into the front. Now some might escape too, the odds are always just random, but you have a better chance of retaining the fish a lot of times if they're in a big school like that. So you're gonna pull it in like that. Remember, you're always throwing it out, twisting with the wrist, pulling in like you're, you're rowing a boat, and then bringing it into yourself, and then you can assess what you have in your net once you've got it. So those are the very basics. And I hope that helps a little bit if you guys are want to get out there and try out these dip nets. Also, if you're interested in the perfect dip net, these ones made by Mark over at Jonah's Aquarium. I know that sentence probably doesn't make sense, <laughs> but that's the name of Jonah, Jonah's Aquarium's owner. Uh, then go down to the link in the description. You can pick these up. They will last you years and years, and they're super high grade, and you can customize them a lot of different ways for whatever species you're going for, the kind of water you're gonna be in, and who you are, how big you are, and how fine of a uh, catch you wanna catch versus how quickly you wanna pull through the water and all of that. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time on The Secret History, Living In Your Aquarium.